Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise glorious. You are glorious. Oh, oh, God, you are glorious. My God, my God, you reign. section right now. Welcome to Faith Today. Top right there. He is glorious. What a time we're going to have today. It's Wednesday night, wherever you are. I sense an expectation in the air. I'm ready for what God's going to do. I put a comment already in the screen. I'm expecting for what God is going to do. If you're expecting right there, right now, I am expecting for tonight what God is going to do. It's not going to be a normal Wednesday night. It's going to be a power, Holy Ghost-led Wednesday night. And I'm telling you, everything that you believe in God for tonight by faith is going to be manifest in your life. Your life is about to be changed. And uh, Evangelist Pastor Vessel, 
is in the house one more time. One more Come time. on. Good to be Welcome. here. Welcome. Great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. It's going to be a great night tonight. It's going to be another good night. I tell you, last night we got a flow going. That's right. And uh, I know tonight God's going to do something God, as well. Something incredible tonight. It's so good. get ready. Uh, get ready. It's going to be a good night. Listen, yeah. wherever you're watching it, Cape Town to Cairo, all across Africa, right here in America and around the world on Faith Now, let us know where you're watching from. Come on, do us a favor. Quickly put it in the comment section. Let us know. We're looking at this. People are watching literally from all over already. And uh, a lot of chat going on in the comment section. I feel tonight that expectancy, Jen, is about to rise. Are you ready for what God's going to do? Oh, absolutely. And I know last night was it was almost like a platform for us yeah. to catapult us into what God has for us today. You know, I was actually even listening last night to something that uh, Pastor Nancy Dufresne spoke about. And she said, and I think this is just awesome. She said, whenever there's the teaching or the preaching of the Word of God, it allows that flow of faith to come onto the come inside on. of us. And it literally opens the door to let the power of God operate in every area of our lives. And so I do believe that we have had such a flow of faith rise up on the people of God. You know, every time we speak or teach or preach the Word of God across this airway, uh, as you take that into yourself, you are opening the door so that faith can flow and the power of God can have its manifest presence on the inside of us. And that's what I'm believing for. I'm believing that the power of God is going to operate in signs, wonders, and miracles in a very powerful way in our lives tonight. Hallelujah. I tell you, you don't want to miss. You want to stay connected. Brooklyn, what are you believing God for tonight? Well, I mean, last night was just incredible. And I believe so many people receive freedom, receive the breakthrough as they lay down the things that we chatted about yesterday. It was so powerful. Yeah. Or if you, maybe you've been living on the other side, you've been living pure and holy. And it was just a reminder how important it is to stay ready and stay in the things of God. You know, it stirred something on the inside of us. And yeah. I know that that foundation that we've laid is so powerful. And I just, who knows what's going to happen today. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited. It's, it's gonna be good. Steph, I know you ready today. I am ready. You know, I was I went with Brooklyn. I haven't stopped thinking about it actually. And just the fact that we laid things down yesterday, I was thinking about John 15 and how he's talking about abiding in the vine. And he says that he only cuts off the branches that aren't producing fruit and he cuts them off so that we can produce fruit. So the laying down is not just stripping you of, it's stripping you of things that we don't need so that you can produce fruit. So I believe that's what's gonna happen today. Amen, amen. I tell you, God is gonna do something tonight in your life. Come on, put that word expectant in the comment section, YouTube, Facebook, on Faith Now, all around the world. We have an expectancy in the house. Two hours of power with you tonight. And uh, it is our last night this week with you as always. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays we're with you. And then Thursday, South Africa. Friday's Youth Night. Sunday, we do it all again with all the services. And we are back with you again next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So God is doing something. But right now, we got to praise the Lord. So wherever you are, put on your praise cap. Let's praise the Lord right now. And believe God to do something amazing in your life these two hours. God bless you.
For greater things, there's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. that our God can do. I love that song. You know, today I'm, I'm feeling the power and anointing of God. God's about to do something over here, Pastor Vessel. We picked up a flow this last week and uh, the last two nights, and I know that uh, today's our last program with you uh, across the networks and uh, for this particular week, and then it'll be South Africa tomorrow night, and, and uh, where, uh, Friday night is the youth meeting. But God's doing something. There, there's an expectancy in there. What are you feeling for today? Well, I feel, I feel the same thing. You know, yesterday was glorious. You know, while we were speaking, uh, just a, a sudden surge of His power yeah. Yeah, that yeah. came. And uh, I feel that same presence today. I'm excited. You know, expectation is the breeding ground for the miraculous. I always say. Right, right. You know, when the, when the Scripture says there was a widow woman in Elisha's time, uh, she needed a miracle. And the Scripture says, Elisha said to her, go and get vessels, empty vessels. And so it can be filled up. The miracle ceased when the expectation stopped. Right. When there was no longer vessels to fill, that's when the miracle stopped. That's right. So as people are getting expectant and excited about what God's going to do, God will fill those vessels to the overflow. Mm. So just get ready and, uh, you know, I'm anticipating a move of God. Yeah, yeah. I believe that God will heal, touch, and change lives today. Yeah. Wow. Jen? Amen. Well, I'm, I'm expectant. I really yeah, am. Yeah. I, I love that message. I, I really also believe that as soon as the expectation dies down right. or stops, it's right. really because our attention is shifted. That's right. You know, while our attention is on the presence of God that's on the inside of us, while our attention is on the Word of God, that expectation will always be flowing because right. we've tapped into the greater one that's on the inside Absolutely. of us. Yeah. But as soon as you find your um, expectation is dwindling, it's normally because you've shifted your attention onto something else. Right. And you know, even when uh, we want to receive our miracle, or we want to receive um, the breakthrough that we need, if our attention is on the wrong thing, we're going to answer the problem with the wrong words. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and so that's why, you know, just keep your focus on what God wants your focus to be, and that is Him. It's all about Him. It's all about His Word. It's about the power that's on the inside of you to flow in and through you, to be the answer that you need to the enemy. Every time the devil tells you uh, that what is going on around you is more real than what the Word of God says, yeah. you've got to answer him with the Word. Come answer on. him with Come the on. truth. But if our attention is on the wrong thing, our expectation is going to dwindle. Right. And so that's really what these broadcasts are about is to kind of kickstart <laughs> or kind of get to, get to the place where we shake you into realigning your attention, getting it right back onto the truth of God's Word, yeah. on, onto the truth of who you are in Christ Jesus and who He is in you right now. Everything, everything you need is already on the inside of you because Jesus Himself is on the inside of you. So that's what we want to do. It's an, a, a 
constant tweaking, a constant adjusting, getting you right back your focus on what it should be so that your expectation is always high, That's that right. you can constantly draw from what heaven has for you. That's right. You know, if you're watching from anywhere in the United States of America, anywhere in the UK, and anywhere in Africa, around the world, I want you to make sure that you make this your favorite channel and that you stay connected to it as we're bringing adjustments into the channel of what God's doing. Absolutely amazing things are happening. And one of the things is your program, uh, Pastor Vessel, your program called The Miraculous yes. is available right here on Faith TV USA and Faith TV UK, and it's available on Faith Now all around the world. And it's a program you want to watch, and uh, it airs every Saturday night at uh, 8 p.m., uh, which is Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. every Saturday night right here in the USA, and it airs at 8 p.m. in the UK. All right, on a Saturday evening, great opportunity for you to connect, great opportunity for you to get the Word of God on the inside of you. And uh, that program is life transforming. Uh, but I, I, I really want to ask you to, to follow. I want you to ask to connect, uh, especially if you live in the USA over here, connect with Pastor Vessel on their website. And uh, your website is WDBM. All right, WDBM. Vessel de Brain Ministries. That's correct. WDBM.org. Dot .org. Dot All right, it is out there. It's on your screen even right now. And uh, I would encourage you to connect with them to, to be a part of what God's doing. And if you're a man of God and a pastor, even in the area, if you live in the USA and you'd like to have Brother Vessel come and minister for you, come and impart life and life abundant to your church, just make contact through the website. That's right. And uh, you, you're going to be in America for a couple of weeks still. You're traveling a lot. There's a lot of opportunities that yes. God's opened up for you, a lot of preaching engagement, but you do still have some time yes. for some other ministries to be able to contact you. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some dates available. And um, I'm, just, I'm just flowing as, as the Spirit of God leads right. to where He wants us to go. Yeah. Amen. And, and you're going from here up into? We're going to go up to Louisiana. Louisiana. Believing God Texas. for a move. And then I'm going to go to Kentucky. Okay. And then I'm back in Florida again in Palm Coast for a glorious conference. And then Texas. All right. Yeah. So God's got you on the move. God's got me on the move. <laughs> Come on. On the move. Carry it on you. Uh, uh, you. Yeah. And, and yeah. Last year, in 11 months, we've traveled uh, 64,000 miles. Wow. 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 More than 100,000 kilometers. Come on. Come yeah, on. Of the gospel. Praise God. And this year it's going to be more. It's going to be more. Come on. It's All right. There you have it. I, I want to invite you. Go to the website WD. BM. BM. All <laughs> right. I've got, I got, got to get all these uh, <laughs> uh, correct order of the letters. All right. So I want to encourage you. Go to his website. Watch the program on Faith Now. Uh, you can go and get it at any time on faithnow.com. And you can download and you can follow on their website as well, much of the live streaming, much of the things that are happening. And then you've also got your YouTube channel. You've got a yes. different few other things as well. All your social media is on your website for That's people correct. to be able to connect with you. Everything is on our website so they can watch and see All right. what God is doing. Okay, there, there you have it. Now, for those of you that are YouTubers with us right here, I'm looking at you. All right, you are YouTubing with us on the Faith TV program. Do you know that statistics are telling us that at least 50% of you that watch us are not subscribed to our channel? We need that to change, all right? We need it to change. If you are a YouTuber with us, all right? If you are watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, you need to like us. We are very likable people. All right, and you need to like us. You've, you've got to, if you're on Facebook, you need to like us. If you're on YouTube, you need to subscribe to our channel right over there, myfaith.tv. And uh, I really want to encourage you, click the subscribe button on YouTube. Click that subscribe button. Don't just, don't just not be a part because by you subscribing, listen, this is not about money, but by you subscribing, it helps us on our analytics on YouTube to get more and more uh, with regards to Faith TV and this particular YouTube channel. And then for those of you that have never yet uh, downloaded Faith Now, Faith Now is our streaming service. Faith Now is the one platform no one can ever shut down, no one can take from us. It's our platform, we own it. And uh, we'd love you to download the app 
we'd love you to subscribe. We'd love you to be a part of Faith Now as well that you can follow on with what God is doing. Because when it gets to Revival 10, there's going to be certain things we're going to do on Faith Now that we're not going to do on other social media platforms. If you want to be a part, we're 65 days away from Faith Now uh, or from Faith Revival X. 65 days away. You've got to have faith now. All right, I'm telling you this. You've got to be able to make sure you've got it. We're going to make it available to every one of you. You need to subscribe. You need to be a part of faith now because when it gets to the Revival 10, children, we are going to broadcast every one of the Revival programs for children live on faith now only. All right, and that's where you are going to be able to watch. You can tell mom and dad, mom and dad, you've got to get faith now. We've got multiple channels on faith now and your children will be able to watch live every single meeting of what's taking place on uh, the Revival X for children. All right, remember 10 hours a day, 10 days in the presence of the Lord, 100 hours. And uh, for those of you that uh, don't know, all right, I want you to understand, we've got amazing guest speakers coming. But uh, Brother Curry wrote this comment on the Faith Broadcasting Faith Now channel. He wrote this comment. He said, God has shown me some things concerning what He's going to do at Revival X. I'm excited to be a part of it. This is the next move of God. All right, and uh, there is an expectancy. Every single one of the speakers are expectant for what God is going to do. We have had more registrations already. I'm getting an update every single day of the registrations. We have had more registrations for Revival X than we've ever had in the history of any of the revivals. We have had more registrations already, Pastor, that have exceeded any one of our other registrations ever and our attendances of any other revival meeting. Revival X, we have already passed it and we are still 65 days away. If you've not yet registered, you need to go to the registration tab. You need to go to myfaith.tv. You need to register. We have just concluded yesterday, we have just secured another hotel group in East London that is making their hotel rooms available at a very special discounted rate. You can get all of that information on our website, myfaith.tv, or you can call. There's a special number that we've got available for you to call, and that number is going to come on your screen here in just a moment because I want you to understand each and every, uh, uh, what we are doing, we are doing our best to make sure that you get all the information that you need for faith revival. So there is a number on your screen that I really want to encourage you to to call and it's the number 043-711-4840. Now that number operates during office hours. And I'm saying this, there's a lot of stuff I need to say and I do this once a week because I want to make sure every one of you get all the understanding of this. uh, 043-711-4840. If you need to speak to someone, We have six available lines there in our office with six ladies that will be able to help you every day, Monday to Friday, with any questions you have pertaining to Revival X. Then we have a special email address. That email address is for questions only. Now the registration email address is different to this email address, but the one I'm going to give you now is called faithevents at myfaith.tv. Faith events at myfaith.tv. That is a email address for questions only, where we will answer and if you need to make contact with us or you can phone us during office hours to get all the data and to get this new hotel group that has offered us a great discount on hotel rooms. We managed to secure, um, I believe we've secured over 200 hotel rooms with this particular hotel group to make sure every one of you can get a hotel room over that great uh, Revival X week. 10 days, 10 hours a day in the presence of the Lord. Now, if you haven't yet registered, you can send an email to revivalx at myfaithtv.com. That email address is there. You can scan that QR code or you can go to our website, uh, myfaith.tv and you can get all of the information that you need over there. It's gonna be truly a glorious time. 
And uh, let's go to here quickly. Let's take a look. Revival X is coming to you. 65 days and we are there. Take a look. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we walk victorious. When his fame spreads, multitudes come. That's the birth of revival. We are kings and priests, and we are taking back the dominion. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Will you speak to me today and show me what I need? This is the sound of revival. Revival is not quiet. Revival is loud. Come on. This is a spirit flow. You can't grab it with your mind. You have to grab it with your heart. I know that I have every devil under my feet. Revival X is coming to you. You don't want to miss. Revival X is coming 65 days away. And I'm going to give you now, and then we're going to get on with what God has. We're going to take five minutes. I'm going to give you five minutes. I'm going to play one or two other things for you in a moment here. But I'm going to give you five minutes to ask whatever questions you want publicly to us on social media. All right, if you've got a question about Revival X, you want to know something, you can type it right now. I'm going to answer them, but you've also got that phone number. Don't forget, you've got that phone number, 041-711-4840, I believe it is, that number on your screen. And you've also got the personal email address that you can go at faithevents at myfaith.tv. Those are two email, uh, that's an email address and a phone number you can call during office hours. But I'm going to take just a couple of questions right over here because I wanted, and I spend just a few minutes every week on this, and I want to do it right now because I believe that many of you have a question. Lisa's asking, will they give transport to this group? We have transport available for you from the hotels and back to the Faith Dome every single day from certain locations, certain hotels. All of that information is on myfaith.tv website. Click on accommodation and transportation. First click on the event of Faith Revival X and then you'll see underneath it, there is accommodation, there is transportation, there's an entire sheet, a PDF you can print out that you can use anytime you want and you, it'll show you which hotels we are running transportation to, which are not. So you don't even have to worry about a car. There is pickups from the airport to the hotels. There's opportunity for transportation. You don't even have to rent a car. You can come just as you are and be a part of it. Everything is available on the website, but please feel free to make that call as well any particular evening, all right? so. Um, Take a look at that. Any other questions? Quickly, let them come. It's going to take a minute or two to get those questions through. I want to make sure I answer every one of them, and I know there's a lot of admin, but I want to get it done because tomorrow we're from East London, and uh, the live is coming from there, and Friday night is the youth. All right, so if there's anything else, I I want you to know. Please also remember, there is special registration for men of God. Ministers of the gospel, fivefold ministers. We have a special room where we're going to feed you, look after you, take care of you. It's all, it's going to be a glorious time, but you need to then register as a fivefold minister and you can get all that on the website. All right, so if you are a minister of the gospel, there's a special place for you. So um, whoever's watching, I saw there's some ministers watching from all over. Make sure you're a part of it. And uh, Sharon and Jan Pretorius in Dubai, make sure you're coming to Revival X. All right, got got to make sure you come. We need a hug again. And uh, come and be a part. God's going to do a glorious, glorious work uh, right there at Revival X. All right, Lisa's saying my flights are booked. Well, it doesn't look like I've got any questions, so I'm going to move straight on. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you ample time. To type a question, if there's anything you want to know, remember no question is too silly to ask. Yeah. All right, people don't hear something and they want to know something, make sure that you, 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 you get that comment in and uh, be a part of what God is doing. All right, so uh, I'm going to give you just another minute or two to get those questions in and then my staff are putting up all the information on social media as well. So I'm going to give you just another minute. I know it's delayed. The feed on social media is about a minute delayed. So I'm going to give you that moment. All right, here we go. Cynthia's asking. All right, Cynthia's saying, Pastor Andre, we are coming by bus and uh, we'll be there on the morning of the 23rd. 
all right, but can only book into the hotel between 2 uh, p.m. into that evening. You can come straight to the dome on the 23rd, all right? You can come straight in. The meetings will be happening already. Uh, we can store your luggage in a secure area for you at the dome. You just ask one of the ushers. We'll lock it away for you. And uh, you can check into the hotel group a little bit later. You can come straight into the meetings. Remember, the meetings are running morning, afternoon, and night. We are running literally a 12-hour in the presence of the Lord. We're going from 10 a.m. in the morning, and we are literally staying at the dome until 10 p.m. at night. All right, so there is food available for you. There's going to be a number of different uh, vendors, a lot of different options for you to eat. Uh, there's going to be drinks available, coffee and tea. A lot of bakeries are coming in. There's a lot happening with regards to food. We've got an entire food court open for you. And uh, you can fellowship with one another in between all the meetings. You don't have to go anywhere. And we just get on into the next meeting. So that was a great question. And... Uh, and there it is. Pastor Andre, can admin give me the number of the car competition? My friend of Kia and Hyundai need more information to ask. Well, let me tell you, we've already, Lisa, we've already bought the cars. We've already concluded the deal and uh, we're excited about that. If they, if, 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 if they want to speak, just get hold of that events details on the screen. All right, and uh, looking forward to that. So uh, everyone's saying they're happy there's a, there's a food court taking place. Percy's saying over here, is there a caravan park close to the venue? There are caravan parks, but they are not close, Percy. But definitely take a look. All that information is on the website or call the number on the screen for details over there. All right, and um, all the other details are on the screen. So let's do it. Let's get there. Now, one last thing. Then we're going to get into what God's got tonight. That is faithworship.com. Faithworship.com. I need every one of you to do me a favor. And I want you to do that favor as soon as we go off air tonight. We have officially uploaded our first music video on faith worship. It is available on YouTube, but you need to do the link and you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel for faith worship, all right? So I need to ask you, I wanna ask you, hundreds of you have already subscribed. We need this video to get a lot of likes. We need this video to get a lot of follows on it. So I'm gonna ask you to go to faithworship.com, click on the video link that'll take you to the YouTube, or should I say, click on the YouTube channel. And on the YouTube channel, of Faith Worship, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe on the Faith Worship YouTube channel and we have just uploaded, uh, literally a couple of minutes before we went live tonight, we have uploaded Joy Is Coming. This is our first video produced, put together, and uh, we want you to play it on your big screen TV. We want you to play it all over. We want you to share it with your friends. I need you to copy the link of Faith Worship uh, YouTube channel. And we got a lot more videos coming. They've taken a couple of months to put together through licensing. It took us a very long time to license the video. All right, we've officially licensed it. That's why it's up six months later than what it should be. But it took a long time to get all the licensing in place for the video and to get the rights for the video. But it is officially up. They've done a great job, the team. There is a lot more worship music coming. And a lot of music's going to come out of Faith Revival X. And I want you to put, I want you to give that video a big like. And I need you to give it a view. All right. I need to get that video views to over 4,000 views. Like very quickly. All right. 4,000 is a break number. We've got to get through. We've got to hit it. We've got to go. So please share it as best you can. Faith Worship on YouTube. And make sure it's our Faith Worship page on YouTube. And to do that, you've got to go to faithworship.com. Click on the YouTube link. It'll take you to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to it, like our channel, and then watch the video. And watch the full video and watch it multiple times and ask your friends all to watch it. It will help us. All right, I've said a lot. You have. I have. <laughs> I've said too much. All right, and uh, I'm done. Okay, sign up. 
come and be a part of what God is doing. So let's go. Can we show, have we got a sneak peek of the music video? All right, we've got a sneak peek. We're going to show you just a little portion. We're not showing you the whole amount. Uh, we're going to show you just a sneak peek. We're going to pull out of it. And then we're going to worship the Lord and God's going to do something very special. This is Faith Worship. Joy is coming. That's all you get. That's all you get. Mm -hmm. You've got to watch it all on YouTube. All right, a powerful video. I want to encourage you, blow it up on your big screen TV. Watch it. Use your big screen TV on YouTube. Many of you watch us on YouTube on your big screen TV. Subscribe to the page. Subscribe to Faith Worship page and subscribe to Faith TV as well. We want to have you with us and we want you to be a part of what God is doing. Amen. Pastor Vessel, <laughs> I'm ready. Are you ready? You've been ready a long time already. You've been sitting here waiting. You ready? Okay. Let's worship Him. What? I, 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 I want to just quickly say this. Let's push in right now. It's Wednesday night. It's midweek. And I want us to come to that place of truly experiencing what God's got for us tonight. So for the next 90 minutes that we're with you over the balance of this program, I want you to put everything aside. I want you to stop everything and I want you to allow the King of glory to enter in as we worship, worship with us, participate with us. An evangelist vessel is gonna minister the word of the Lord. We're going into the Holy of Holies right now. If you're ready, say, Lord, I'm ready. Move in my life. Put that in the comments section and let's worship you. Hallelujah. The reign of darkness now is in in the kingdom of light. In the kingdom of light. For Run out of an empty grave. No 
Oh 
Pastor Vassal, just minister whatever God's laying on your heart. Because I believe it's time to get in the Word. We're going to worship some more a little bit, but God's doing something here today. I want us to be at that place. Thank you. For those watching us, I want to ask wherever you are just to lift your hands for a minute. Just surrender to the Lord. Father, we just want to worship you today yeah. and say, Lord, that we declare that there's none like you. Lord, I believe today that you're going to release your power into homes, into lives, that many who's watching and listening will be healed, will be touched, yeah. and will be set free. We want to take this opportunity just to exalt you, yeah. just to glorify you. Say, Lord, there is none like you. You deserve the highest praise, the highest worship, the highest adoration. And this is what we come to do today, to come and adore you, to love you, Lord. Thank you that we have access to that throne of grace that we can run in freely, Lord, to receive grace and mercy in the time of need. And I pray, Lord, as I minister the Word of God to your people, that it will be revelation, not just information, that it will be, it will be heart changing, Lord, in Jesus' name. And may our lives give you glory, give you honor forever and forever. You are the greatest of them all. Come on, just for a minute more, just lift those hands to heaven. And just thank Him that we have access to Him today. Thank Him for His beautiful presence. There's none like you. And I declare it in the name of Jesus. Today is a day of change. Today is a day of change. Empower your people, Lord. Let them see what your word says in Jesus' mighty name. The people of God said, Amen. Amen. It's such a privilege for me to be and to be able to speak into the lives of people. And I want to take a few minutes just to teach on the Word of God, if I may. Something that has been on my heart for, for a while. And um, there's two things that the Lord taught me in my life that I walk by and abide by. Two things that I want to declare and teach you and I want to help people that's watching me. You know, there's a lot of people that doesn't know this, but I'm a worshiper. Yeah. And I, I cannot sing, but I can worship. And there's a big difference between worshiping and singing. I know a lot of people that's greatly talented by, by God. God gave them a tremendous talent to sing, but it doesn't always make you a worshiper. One thing that I have created in my life is two things that I've created in my life that I want to help people and teach people on today. Number one, I have in my heart, in my life, I have created an atmosphere of worship all around me. Right. And so what I would do is I would always find myself a song. There's many times that I would wake up with a song. I will go to bed with a song. Going to bed with a song, waking up with a song is not just something that came to my heart. It's something that the Spirit of God put in you. If I sing a song about Jesus, it's because the Holy Spirit wants to bring forth that worship out of my being right, to worship right. the Lord. And by doing that, I create an atmosphere for God to dwell in because the Scripture teaches us that God dwells among the praises of His people. So the, one of the most important things is Scripture says that the Lord is looking for true worshipers that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. When you become a worshiper in spirit and in truth, you start to walk in the spirit. And when you understand that dynamic, you would create an atmosphere for God to dwell in. This is why you can go into any room, into any place, into any mall, and you are a carrier of the presence of God. People don't realize who we are in God. And this is what I want to get right for people today. And I believe that after this, you're going to become a powerful worshiper, but a powerful prayer warrior. That your prayer life shall be so different uh, above anything else in your life. Now, I want to stick with this just very quickly. If we understand that Paul says this, he says that we are ambassadors of the kingdom of God. So in other words, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. God has placed something in you that can release forth the kingdom of God in your atmosphere, in your home, in your family, in your workplace, wherever you are. The moment you gave your life to Jesus Christ and became truly born again, you became an ambassador of the kingdom of God. Something changed in you then. I, I, wanna, I wanna go as far as to say that your DNA has changed. You might look at me today and say, what well, the doctor says that this sickness and this disease runs in my family. Well, I wanna tell you, this is where it runs out. This is where it stops. You are not of this kingdom. You are from a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Right, right. And so if you understand that you are an ambassador of the kingdom of God, your prayer life starts to change, your worship change. You know, we, we have a lot of people that, that uses their time of worship and the time of prayer uh, coming to the Lord as beggars. 
Well, we are not just beggars. We are, or let me rephrase that. We are not beggars at all. We are ambassadors. If you think about an ambassador, what does an ambassador do? An ambassador represents his country wherever he is. If we have, we have in South Africa, we have an ambassador of the United States in South Africa. And his job is to represent his country in a foreign nation. Now, I'm an ambassador of the kingdom of God in a foreign nation. So wherever I am, I represent all that heaven is, everything that heaven is. Now, I want to do two things, so we'll speak on two things. Number one, I create, I've taught myself how to create an atmosphere of worship all around right, me. Right. That means 24 hours a day. So I would always find myself a song. My children always say if they want to know where I am, they just follow the music. Right. Wherever I am, I'm singing. I, I, I can't sing, but I can worship. So I always find myself a song and I've realized by creating that atmosphere in my life, I always carry the tangible presence of God. Because if you, whether you know this or not, God loves to be worshipped. He loves to be worshipped from our hearts. Now, Paul makes a statement and he says that we have to pray without ceasing. There's not a day in my life that goes by without me praying. People ask me this continuously, how, how much hours do you put into prayer? Now, I want to share on this a bit. I pray the whole day. Paul says pray without ceasing. Seizing. Right. Now, I want to read a scripture in the book of Matthew, at chapter 6. And I want to touch on this for a minute. It says this in Matthew chapter 6, 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. In other words, don't, don't fear, don't stress, don't worry about your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Not their heavenly Father, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more uh, with more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to your stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes, the, the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will He not much more clothe you, O you of a little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness first, and all these things shall be added unto you. So very quickly, Jesus taught us how to pray and He says that don't worry about what you will wear, what you will eat, what you will drink. Life is more than all these things. And then He said something. He says, for the Gentiles is after these things. It means those outside the kingdom. Right. Those outside the kingdom of God worries what they will eat, what they will wear. But you don't have to worry about all these things. In other words, don't waste spiritual energy on these things. Focus on seeking first your right standing with the Father because that's very important. A lot of people want, they, you know, they want the kingdom benefits, but they don't want to operate by kingdom rule and kingdom law. And to be a, benef a, benef a benefactor rather of the kingdom of God, there's certain things that we have to understand and obey. There's a lot of people pray this prayer, Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And the Lord wants us to tell Him what we desire. But we spend so much time on need that we forget about the kingdom of God and what God says. The, those who's outside the kingdom of God seeks for these things. So those outside the kingdom of God, their prayer is this, Lord, I pray for food, give me money, Lord, give me clothing. Those inside the kingdom of God is supposed to pray in this way, our Father in heaven, I wanna glorify you today. I don't care what's happening all around me, I just wanna tell you that you are good and your mercies endures forever. And so your prayer life starts to shift from timidly to becoming so bold and you know, you become like a lion in your prayer life. Now, I wanna give you one more if I may, in the book of uh, First John it is, First John chapter 5, 14, it says, now this is the confidence that we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition of that, we, that we've asked Him. It says, now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that whatever we ask according to His will. So what is the will of God? His Word. 
the most powerful prayer a man can pray is the, the, the Word of God. There's, there's no more great, you know, I get a lot of times people that message me and say, can you give me a powerful prayer that I can pray unto God for whatever reason? Well, the most powerful prayer that any man or woman can pray is the Word of the living God. I want people to understand that outside the Word of God, we pray our own desires. Outside of the Word of God, there's no power. The power of God is in His Word. Nothing is above His Word. Nothing is above His Word. And so when you understand the will of God is the Word of God. So if I pray the Word of God, I will receive my petition. That's just how, you know, the religious spirit will always tell you, you cannot ask for this and you cannot ask for this. But my Bible says this very clearly. Whatever I ask according to His will, this means if I get myself and my word and my mouth in alignment with the Word of God, I can have whatever I ask Him. And again, my prayer should never, you know, the one thing that the Lord has blessed me with many years ago, He changed my prayer life. And He said to me the one day, Vessel, whatever you, inf whatever you present to me first in prayer is what you enthrone. It changed everything. Because what I do now is I go to the Lord. Even if I have a long prayer, prayer list, what I do is I enthrone Him first. And that would take away the prayer request. Let me explain this. So I have a, a whole list of needs. And then I come into the presence of the Lord. My job is to enthrone Him. And suddenly my prayer list diminishes because I realize I have no need. Everything is in Him. Everything that I need, everything that I want is found in Him. And I realize the more I start to worship Him and adore Him, this is why I create an atmosphere of worship around me every single day of my life, is because life and all of its attacks and its hits dies when Jesus becomes real. You know, I get emotional thinking about this. There's a great man that I became accustomed to. He's in South Africa. And uh, he came to our church facility, he met me during a week. I think it was a Wednesday. And he came and sat right in front of me. And he traveled, I think, a thousand kilometers by car just to get there. And he says to me, Pastor Vessel, I am di diagnosed with stage four cancer. The doctor sent me home. And he said, there's nothing that he can do for me. I'm dying. And he started weeping. And he said, can you, can you pray for me? And when I, before I wanted to pray for him, the Lord spoke to me. He says, don't pray for him. Make Jesus real. And I laid my hands on his stomach because that's where the cancer was. And I started singing that song, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And so I, I, he was weeping and I just, I'm just singing. And I felt how the Lord Jesus touched him. Yesterday, I received a report from this man. He said, I just came back from my doctors. They can't find any trace of cancer. And the only thing that my doctor says is to come back every three years for a checkup. But the cancer is dead. And I'm, it got my heart because now suddenly this man, his focus was lifted from his problem unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so... I, I want people to realize this. The Lord taught me to direct my prayers. So good. My goodness, I'm telling people right now, the presence of the Lord is yeah. here so strong. So my prayer started directing about, it's not just about now, Lord, give me, give me, give me. It's Lord, I want to tell you that how much I love you, how much you mean to me. Because if we have the Word of God in our spirit, man, we have the authority to speak forth the Word of God. I'm thinking about this, uh, and, I, and if I have a few minutes, I'll, I'll, I'll teach you this in a second from out the book of Mark. But I'm thinking about the prophet Elijah, how powerful this man was. The scripture says Elijah had the same spirit as us, and he locked the heavens, and he unlocked the heavens. So this was, by the way, before grace, before the cross. If Elijah, without, understand this, without having the Holy Spirit living on the inside of him, if he had the authority and the power to say, on my word, I will shut the heavens. Now, I want to make a bold, bold statement. Elijah spoke in the days of Ahab, and he says, on my word, it will not rain. And he sealed the heavens. If you go back to that scripture, Elijah didn't pray for seven weeks to hear from God. Elijah had the will of God in him. He knew exactly the will of God. He didn't have to say, hey, let me just inquire from God. He said, I am the voice of God. 
I am the authority of God in the earth. And he blocked the heavens. And so when Ahab saw him coming in 1 uh, Kings 18, he says, this is the troubler of Israel. Here comes the troubler of Israel. Imagine your prayer makes you so bold that when people look at you, they say, here's the troubler of America. Here comes the troubler of South Africa. And you know what he said to Ahab? He says, I'm not the troubler of Israel. You turned your back on God. And because of your sin, God has withheld the rain. Now, I want to go just a little bit further. If he was a man as us with the same spirit and he prayed and it happened, how much more should we that has the Holy Spirit and His power living on the inside of us have the authority of God? But the difference is they knew who they were in God. Today, we, you know, we want to we wanna shy away and we want to hide a, a, a behind everything. And, you know, we're so a, a afraid that we offend people. But bold men of God offended them all. Jesus offended them. And so when you become a man of prayer, you're going to offend some Pharisees along the way. But your mandate is to declare the Word of God. So I'm thinking about this. So here's a man of God who dictates to a whole nation what's about to happen next. He didn't ask Ahab's permission. He didn't ask, he didn't even say, will it come from the government? He said, this is directly from God. On my word, it shall not rain. So I'm telling you that what God is going to do in this hour is get people back to the place of authority and power in your prayer that you will dictate to nations what's about to happen. Now, in the, under the authority of the Holy Spirit, I can speak and declare these things today. The Bible says this very clearly. The prayer of the righteous avails much. The prayer of the righteous. How, how's the righteous supposed to pray in this hour? Again, let's go back to the Word. I have to pray the Word. Now, I'm a bold man. I've never been timid my whole life. I've never been bullied. I've always been bold in my stance. I've got a passion for the Word of God. Every time it comes to the Word of God, I become passionate. I lit up because this thing is so real to me. And so the second thing that I have established in my heart is my prayer life. Now, what I would do is I would pray the whole day. I would pray in tongues as much as I can, as much as I can. But I've realized that as much as powerful praying in the Spirit is, there must come a time in our daily walk with God that I'm going to have to shut myself behind the door and pray. So I want to, if I, if I may just quickly go back to the book of Matthew chapter 5. Jesus said this. Um, I'm sorry, this is still Matthew chapter 6. It says, but when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, uh, shut your door, uh, pray to your father who's in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So here comes Jesus and he teaches us that what the setting must look like, the secret place. Now the secret place is no longer for me uh, having to cover my head to have a veil or even going to my prayer room. The secret place is that between me and God. This is the secret place over here. I carry that secret place. So I can, the secret place can become any place where I can shut off from anything. I was in a, in, a, in a place that they were doing renovations the one day. I was standing and speaking to people and suddenly I felt the draw from God and that became my secret place right there. I broke down. In a, I mean, there's five adult men around. I broke down right there because of that secret place that I carry. And I, I, I want to say this to people. This is again is a bold, bold statement I want to make. There is no higher um, office, title, anything given to a man but this, that a man walked with God. Nice. You can call yourself an apostle, an evangelist, whatever you want. That's There's right. no such thing powerful and higher yeah, yeah. than that understanding that a man walks with God. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible teaches us clearly. And there's so many different doctrines and teachings going on about the throne of God that I want to just set straight in five seconds. The Bible says this, Therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. First of all, if you're born again in the kingdom, the, the, the throne room of God is not a place of judgment. It's a place of grace to receive. So he says that when you come boldly, how can I come boldly? I come through the blood of the Lamb, through the name of Jesus Christ, that's my position now, to with the Father, back into the presence of God. Come boldly to the throne of grace, to receive grace and mercy in the time of need. So when I pray, the only struggle that there is, is between me and the flesh. I don't have to fight much principalities and powers, because principalities and powers is under my feet. 
So what people do is people tend to fight devils so many hours before they, they lose so much valuable time that they can spend in the presence of God by fighting stuff that's already been fought for them. And so what, there's a lot of different doctrines that says that if you go into the presence of God, you have to fight like you fight in a court case and you have to write down so many different letters and approach the bench. Now let me just make this thing straight. I, when I approach the bench, I have an advocate. An advocate does the talking, first of all. My advocate has made me okay with God. He's made me right with God. So that when I go into the, into the courtroom, it's not guilty, guilty, guilty. It is, you are free, you are delivered, you are healed, you are made whole. There's no fight for me. The fight is the flesh, it's not the devil. So when I get my flesh under submission, I can go in and this is where God wants us to live, in the secret place of the Most High. This is why Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place. The secret place should not be a place of visitation. It should be a dwelling place. He who dwells in the secret place uh, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now imagine you can live a life so close into the secret place of God that His glory, His presence, cast off a shadow permanently in your life. That's amazing. So wherever I walk in, I carry the glory of God with me. And in the book of Mark, I want to show you this. And this is where I want to go into. And then I hope this is helping somebody today. Because it changed my prayer life. And this what I'm going to teach on very quick. I'm going to try to go through this as quick as I can. It's not a law. But it's something that the Lord taught me on how to pray. And I'm going to give you this. is in Mark 14. So if you have your Bibles, this is Mark 14 verse 32. It says this, that then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James and John with him. And he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch. And he went a little bit further, fell on the ground. And he prayed that if it was possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And then he came and found him sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, this is awesome for me. If you understand this portion of scripture, Jesus took his disciples to the garden of Gethsemane. This is not the first time that they've been there. That he visited Gethsemane many times. And many of those times he spent time with his father. And very important, if Jesus spent the time with his father, how much more we? If we want what Jesus had, we, had to, we have to do what he has done to receive that. That's spending time in the presence of God. Now I love this. So the scripture says he, he takes his disciples and he makes them to sit. And that place is called the gate. Now, if you study the Old Testament, the tabernacle was divided into three sections. The outer court, the inner court, the holies of holies. Not everybody could enter the holies of holies, only the high priest. And the high priest had to go in here by here with a sacrifice. And what they would do is they would take a rope and, and, and they would fasten it around his waist and make the rope lay out outside the temple doors. So that, and by the way, what they also did was they took bells and they would sew it into his clothing. So when the high priest walk into the holies of holies and they hear the bells, the nation will know that the sacrifice has been accepted. If the bells were silent, they knew he died. They would take the rope and pull him out because lest they enter in, they would die. So if you get to the outer court, there was a gate. And to get into the, into the inner court, you had to go through a door. And to get into the holies of holies, you had to go through a veil. But what's so powerful is even today that they know that door. They were calling that door back then. And even today, if you speak to the Jewish rabbis, they would call that door the way. They would call, or the gate, they will call the gate the way. Then they will call the door that leads into the, into the inner court, they would call the, uh, the, the truth. And the veil was known as the life. So in other words, for a high priest to go into the holies of holies, he had to go through a gate, a door, and a veil. He had to go through the way, the truth and the life, and that's Jesus Christ. So if you're born again, you have access right there to the throne of God. So here's Jesus, he sits all his disciples, and he says to them, sit here and watch and pray. And then he took three of them, Peter, James, and John. And he went a little bit further. And the, the funny thing is that what Jesus said to them here is, he said to them, my, sp or my soul is sorrowful. He didn't say my flesh is sorrowful. 
didn't say my spirit is sorrowful. He said, my soul is sorrowful, even unto death. Then he says, you have to watch and pray with me. Then he went by himself, a stone throw away. Now this is powerful. He went alone. And he got to a place where his prayer was directed to the will of the Father. Not his own will, to the will of his Father. Then he came back. So what I want to, just quickly for time's sake, the, when he left his disciples at a place, he left them at a place called the outer court. He took Peter, James and John and he went a little bit further to a place called the inner court. Place of emotion. Place where feelings arise. Then Jesus went on to the holies of holies. Into the place where he's praying directed to the will of the Father. And also, by the way, that place is called life. It's where anything that's dead must, re must revive. Everything that is sick and dormant must, must be made whole. It's in that dimension. He came back. He found Peter sleeping. And the scripture is very clear. Again, as I said last night, you have to be very careful when you read scripture. Don't just read it verse for, re for verse. Read it word for word. Because G the scripture says this clearly. Then Jesus said to Peter, Simon. He didn't, he didn't say, hey, Peter. He said, hey, Simon. So it's funny enough that Jesus reverted back to his old nature. He called him his old man. And then he said to him, Simon, pray lest you fall into temptation. Why he spoke to him in that way and said, Simon, not Peter, is because Satan cannot tempt the new man in Christ. He tempts the old nature. Yeah. So Jesus was saying, deal with the old nature. Get out of the soulless realm right into the holiest of holies because the old nature don't want God. The old man does not. The old man wants sleep. He wants food. And he wants his own way and his own will. But Jesus says you have to crucify yourself. If you want to come up higher where I am. If you want to pray prayers with results. So many people sit in the outer court. And the only thing that they do is they, they beg God. They pray stuff that is not even worth. You know, I was in the church. The one day I was sitting in the, in the green room. And um, the service started. And one of the ushers or somebody started praying for a man in hospital and this is what he prayed he said father i pray for brother joe in hospital and if it be thy will would you heal him and if it's not your will lord let him just slip away and i thought this is my time now to get up i ran out of the green room and i grabbed the microphone out of his hand and i said lord cancel this unbelievers prayer joe i command you in the name of jesus christ who must serve rise and be healed in jesus name let me tell you if you're on, on in the hospital busy dying you want the guy like me next to your bed you want somebody that can pray the prayer of faith and say this is what we believe jesus christ paid such a price for you that you can live and be made whole so what i wanted what, to tell people is i've started off when i when i started praying many many years ago when i started uh, you know my walk with god I would always be in the outer court. Everybody starts there, even in our worship. We start in the outer court. That's the place of the flesh. It's a place where we get tired and weak and your, your, your mind starts to wander off on your problems, your difficulties, your job and what you need. And this is why we pray, Lord, give me food. Lord, give me something to wear. Now Jesus says, you are praying like somebody outside of the kingdom. All right, so that's the wrong way of praying. Is there a wrong way of praying? Yes. There's a wrong way of praying. So now Jesus comes and He takes three of them. He says, come, there's a better place. Come closer, come closer. Only three of them went into a place called the inner court, the soul is dimension. So what people do is now there's a place where you get into the Lord, where your tears starts to flow and your emotion starts to rise up. But what people tend to do is people go by their emotion and think, wow, now I've had a good time with God and then they stop praying. But what Jesus is saying, come closer. Yeah, yeah. There's a place in the spirit where you can enter in and there you don't work. You don't beg. There it's a place of life. There's a place of rest. This is a place where you come in where I'll become so real to you. That all the things of the earth will just disappear. And when you establish that in your life, you establish that prayer life. I'm at a point now in my life. I'm there all the time. If, I, if I'm entering my room, I can close my door, I can say Jesus, and I'm there. Right. I, if I have two more minutes, I just want to say this. You've got a long time. I, have, I had been away for two weeks traveling the one day, and I was preaching every night, and my body was tired when I got home. And I sat in my lounge, and I had a, Coca, a glass of Coca-Cola. And I said to the Lord, I'm going to finish my Coca-Cola, and then I'm going to go to bed because I'm so tired. And I had a sip of my Coca-Cola and I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me, I want you to go and pray. And I said, Lord, I love you with all of my heart. I'll pray tomorrow. I've prayed for two weeks. I've prayed for everybody, Lord. I'm just so tired. I just want to go to bed. 
And I think two minutes passed, and I heard the second time, Vessel, I want you to pray. But it's more, the voice is more sterner now than previously. And I, I will never forget this. I went to the edge of my chair and I looked up. I said, but Lord, I just, I just explained to you how tired I am. And I promise you, tomorrow I'll pray. And I'll never forget this. The third time I heard his voice, it was as strong as ever. He said to me, Vessel, pray lest my spirit withdraws from you. That got my attention. Yeah, yeah. I jumped up and I ran to my prayer room and I closed my door. He said to me, pray. But there was no praying. He was there right. immediately. He, he was just there. And I, I fell on my face and I started weeping uncontrollably. I just wept. But it was so severe, so strong that I couldn't open my eyes. I couldn't look up. I felt like if I look up now, I'll die. I'll die. The glory of God is just too much. Hours went past. And I got up and I walked out of my, out of my prayer room. And I sat in the living room to try to think what just happened. And I heard him say to me a second time, go back. And I went back. I closed the door again. And I wept and I wept and I wept. Again, I went out. And the third time I, I heard him say this to me. And m m many people, maybe you would say, well, this can't be the truth. Well, I'll have to give accountability for what I say. The third time he said to me, Vessel, I loved spending time with you. Would you spend a few more minutes? That got me. Who am I that the King of the universe, He's the one that says, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. But where is the place of my rest? Then he goes on to say, I found a man. That's my resting place. And I ran back into that room. And this is what the Lord said to me. Now you can ask me whatever you want and I'll give it to you. I, I had a list. I had a list of stuff I wanted to ask him. The only thing I could say is I want more of you. I just want you. All these things doesn't matter because the scripture says, if I seek him first, if my heart's desire is after him, all the other things will just be added. I don't have to work for that stuff. I don't have to figure it out. That's his job. My job is to seek wholeheartedly after him. You see, when Jesus came to that place, into the holies of holies, Angels came down to minister Him. Hebrews chapter 1 teaches us that angels are ministering spirits sent forth to work for those that's heirs of salvation. So when I live in that place, that dimension of the holies of holies, God will send these angels. He will give these angels charge over you because your, your heart is just to dwell into the secret place of the Most High. I got a great testimony. I was flying to Port Elizabeth and I had a friend with me that was going with me. And I got into the plane and the Lord said to me, when you arrive, I want you to pray earnestly. And I, I turned to my friend, I said, if I get to Port Elizabeth, we're going to pray. I have to pray. There's an urgency in my heart. I arrived in Port Elizabeth and the, the preacher took me to the, my, um, it's like a bed and breakfast. And he said to me, I've got good news for you. I know that you like to pray and there's nobody in this whole bed and breakfast the whole weekend. So you can just pray and do whatever you want to do. And he's showing you the place. And I said to him, listen, I love you, but you have to get out. I need to pray right now. And I closed my door and I started praying. And I thought, well, the Lord's going to keep me busy for at least half an hour to an hour. But I promise you, I started 7 p.m. that night. And when I said amen, it was 3 a.m. in the morning. But it felt like five minutes. And I went to bed the next morning as I came to the church. The pastor opened up the service and he said, I want to just testify something. He said, last night I took Pastor Vessel to his guest house. And I told him, nobody's there. He can pray as loud as he wants, do whatever he wants to do. He says, but the, the, his room, was my, so my room was connected to a shop. The only thing that separated me in the shop was a wall. And he says, the owner of the shop is an atheist. And when he has a bad day, he sleeps in his shop. And he says, last night was one of those bad days. And he slept in his shop. And he says, the owner said that he heard a Christian praying. And he laughed. And he says, well, luckily it's not going to last long because Christians don't pray long. And he says, he said that at 8 p.m. He says 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m. He says, this guy doesn't, doesn't want to stop. He just keeps on praying and praying and praying. And just before 3 a.m., the Lord knocked him out of his bed. He fell on his face and he cried out to God and accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and his Savior. Why? Because one man made the decision. If I'm going to live, I'm going to live in the glory of God. If I'm going to live, if I'm going to walk with God, I'm going to walk with God to the fullness. I'm not going to walk with God. I'm not meeting God halfway. I'm going to go all the way. And I want to encourage people that's watching me right now to get on your face before the Lord and say, Lord, you've created the secret place for me. God never intended man to live apart from Him. 
If you study the scripture in the book of Genesis, man was always created to be in fellowship and in harmony with God. It's, it's our sin that has separated us. But Jesus Christ paid that price so that I can come back to God. He, he, reconciled, he, he reconciled us with God. And, and you have that opportunity just to run back to God and say, Lord, I want this power. And I promise you, that's how power comes. Come power comes as a result of your encounter that you had on, with the Holy Spirit. On. And I have encounters on a daily basis with the Holy Spirit. Encounters that I can't even always tell my family about because I think sometimes they will think I've lost my, my mind. How can this be? But there's times that I can tell you, this is why I can sit here today and know exactly when the Lord heals people. I feel this power and I'm not going by feeling because faith is not feeling, but this is my walk with God that I, I know exactly when He starts to heal people. I know exactly when His presence comes in a place uh, because I walk with Him. And that place that changed everything for me is that secret place. So very quickly, if you start to pray, keep your focus back on the Lord. If your mind strays, keep your focus back on the Lord. I love what the Bible says. He says that we do not know what to pray. Therefore, the Holy Spirit will pray through us. And the Holy Spirit will direct your prayer. So He will help you to pray. The quickest way to get in the presence of the Lord is exalt Him. Exalt Him. Glorify Him. That's how, this is the, the quicker you do that, the quicker you'll get to that. I like to call it a place called there. It's a secret place, a place where you are completely hidden in the Lord. So what I do, what I would always do when I start off by praying, I would never go to the Lord and say, Lord, look at my problems. I would go to the Lord and say, Lord, look at your word. Your word cannot fail. This is what your word says concerning my life. If Satan attacks your mind in prayer and tells you how bad your future is, just remind him of his future. It, it's time that the, ch the church of Jesus Christ understand who they are. Say to that devil, devil, let me tell you about your future. According to the scripture, there's a place prepared for you. It's called the lake of fire. Let me tell you about my future. My future is secured in the Lord. My God says, I know what I've planned for you, declared the Lord. Plans to prosper, to give you hope in the future. But come on, my future is heaven. That's my future. So stop praying your problem and start praying the promise. Go to the Lord with the promise of God. It is written and results will come forth and you'll get right into the presence of God to a place where angels will come and encourage you and God will empower you and give you the desires of your heart. I've been there many times in my life. One night in our church, we had a conference. We ended about 11 p.m. Everybody left. The Lord said, you stay. I prayed at 2 a.m. I would never forget this. 2 a.m. The Lord said to me, Vessel, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. I'm now in a place of glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had, a, I had a need. I said, Lord, this is the need. and This is your word. And I thank you for it. And I went to bed. 7 a.m. that morning, that, me, that need was met without telling any person, just telling it to the Lord. Come on, come and so on. that dimension is where you don't have to work hard. You just receive from the Lord. And practice makes perfect. The more you go to the gym in the, in the natural, the easier it will get. When you start out, your muscles burn. You don't want to go back. But eventually when you, when you have it under your knee, or under your belly, or under your belt rather, it's sorted out. Right. Under your belly too. <laughs> but in any case, so it's sorted out. Then it's easy. Yeah. Then you start to like it. That's exactly the same by entering the presence of God. Practice makes perfect. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Wow. wow. Do you not what a word. Also that that's, uh, I know the word says that He answers even before you ask. Even before we ask. This is why the psalmist says, therefore I will bend down. Because every time I bend down to pray, He hears me. He hears me. I love that other scripture. It says that when I'm overwhelmed, lead me to the rock, which is higher than I. That's one of my most, I think the most precious scripture in the, in the book of Psalms. When I'm overwhelmed, lead me to that rock, which is higher than I. And Jesus Christ is His name. And I, you know, you, you will fall in love with Him over and over. And your walk with God will get sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Pastor Jenny, I was thinking about this last night. If my prayer life, my times of prayer, with the Lord is so awesome. What will heaven be like? What will it be like if I see Him face to face? Yeah. What? I, I don't think our minds can comprehend it. I love my secret or my, 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 my alone times with the Lord. It's, it's like I'm already there. But can you imagine when we step over eternity and here He is? Oh. Hallelujah. And I think we'll be able to handle it more because we'll have glorified bodies. Yeah, we'll have glorified bodies. I, the thing is, I don't think we could handle no, the no. intensity without no. those glorified bodies. Never. Which the Word says, this is our hope. Yeah. 
This is how we're supposed to comfort and encourage one That's another, right. is to constantly remind each other that He said He's coming to give us glorified, glorified bodies, bodies. Yeah. to take us to Himself, to That's a place right. that He's already prepared That's for right. us. Right. And that is that is our blessed hope. Yeah. That is what we encourage each other with. But until then, we can get to the place where we are so ready for that, that we've already programmed ourselves to be so more aware of what happens in our spirits than what is happening in in our carnal nature, which is for me the most glorious gift to have. That's why the Word says, in Him we live and move and have our being because we can practice walking in that realm even though we can't experience it to the extent That's we right. will, at least we can have a taste Amen. and see that the Lord is oh, good. good. Hallelujah. Let's do this tonight. Come on, we've got a couple of moments left with you. Let's just go there. Let's just, I feel His presence. Absolutely. Just take us. Sure. Take us, Pastor Vessel. Let's, let's just go wherever, however you want to lead this moment. I want you to experience what God's got for you tonight. So can you forget about some things, yeah. lay some stuff down and just, just go there. So right. take the, us. The scripture says that we shouldn't just be hearers of the word, but become doers. So tonight you've heard, but now I want to teach you to do. So wherever you are, just put your hand held device down, maybe just go on your knees and let's just start to worship the Lord. Come on, just open your mouth and tell Him what He means to you. Father, we, we love you tonight. Hallelujah. We love you. We glorify you. We praise your name. We want to say this publicly, Lord, that you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, our bright and morning star. We declare that you are righteous and holy. And Lord, we say that you are our Jehovah Jireh. You are our Jehovah Rapha, our Jehovah Rofeka, our Jehovah Tikkuni. You are more than enough for us. Lord, we declare your mighty works and we thank you tonight that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and run to you, Lord. Come on, wherever you are, just cry out to Him and glorify Him. Forget your problem, your situation, and exalt the name of Jesus. Thank you that we have access to the throne of grace through the blood of the Lamb and through the Word, through through the name of Jesus Christ, but that we can have the boldness and the liberty to come, Lord, and declare that we are Your children and You are a good Father. Thank you tonight, Lord, that we have no need. Our need is You. And when we seek Your face, Lord, you You will provide all that is needed and give us far above that we can ever think and ever imagine. I thank you, Lord, that we can run to the throne of grace. Holy Spirit, take us there. Reveal Jesus to us right now in Jesus' name and let the Word of God come alive. Lord, it is written in your Word and I have been young and I have been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his descendants begging for bread. According to your Word, Lord, the righteous shall flourish in the times of trouble. It is written in your Word, Lord, that in the house of the righteous, there shall be wealth and riches and you will surround him with favor as with a shield in Jesus name. I thank you Lord that in the days of trouble the righteous shall laugh at every difficulty in Jesus name. Thank you that you are our glory and the lifter of our head. We declare your healing. Your word says that you are the Lord our healer. Therefore we send your word right now to into the world in Jesus name and we command sickness to be gone Lord to die to the root. Touch your people supernaturally. Cancer you will bow your knee to that great name. Come out in that body. Come out from that body and enter no more in Jesus' name. Touch mindsets, Lord. Let fear diminish us tonight in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, as your people run to your throne, I thank you, Lord, that you receive them. Come on, as you run boldly to the throne of grace and just surrender, you'll turn your life upside down. Do it tonight, Lord. Do it in your mighty power in Jesus' name. Lady Shirley from Miami just called in. She said, right now, she's just found the number on the screen. She said, As you were ministering, my eye was instantaneously healed right here in Miami. All pain left instantly, totally healed in her eye. I want you to call that number on the screen right now, 1-800-245-7717, wherever you are right now. If you feel the power of God, if God's doing something, if you're needing God to connect with you, something's happening here tonight. There's a number, you can call it right now on the screen, 1-800-245-7717, right now. The power of God, there's a move of God happening. So as you just carry on flowing right now, God's doing something. Hallelujah. Lord, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, the unchanging one. Lord, we speak your word and your word only. We look at you and you only. 
The word says, whose report shall you believe? We believe the report of the Lord. Let the report of the Lord go forth tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah, rah, this bah, bah, is the place yeah, where yeah, sickness yeah, dies. This is the place where every familiar spirit runs out in Jesus' name. Lord, the curse has been reversed. And therefore, we declare your word over physical bodies. Yeah. Lord, those who's connecting and believing you for a physical healing. As I stretch my hand forth towards this camera, Lord, let your life that's in me flow through the airwaves of the world. Touch people. Lord, deliver them. I command you to come forth out of that sick bed in Jesus' name. I command your bones to become strong. I rebuke paralysis right now in Jesus' name. I curse it. I command it to be gone. There's a spine that the Lord is straightening out right now in Jesus' name. I see a disc being formed by the power of God in that backside. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, those who's in need of new organs, let organs be created supernaturally. Yes, Lord, you are the Lord yes. God Almighty who made us. And you are the one, Lord, with all the spare parts. And therefore, I call it forth from heaven right now. I speak to that body to receive new lungs, to receive those new kidneys in Jesus' name. Lord, they are coming off those dialysis now in Jesus' name. No more dialysis. I curse it in the name of Jesus. And I speak to those kidneys as I see it. Live in the name of Jesus Christ. I come as a man of God. And I speak forth to every dry bone. You hear the word of God. You shall live in Jesus' name. Dry bones come forth right yes, now yes, in the name of Jesus yes. Christ. I, I want to encourage you right now. It's not dead. It's just sleeping. But I'm here commanding it to live in the name of Jesus, yes. Lord. And the anointing that's on me, your word declares it destroys the yoke. Now every yoke under the sound of my voice is cursed. It's broken in the name of Jesus Christ, never to return ever again. Right now, Lord, every lunatic spirit has to yes, go yes, in the name yes. of Jesus Christ. Thank I you, command Jesus. you come out of those bodies, loosen those souls in Jesus' name and fill them with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that, Lord, that it is done, it is done, it is done. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. hallelujah, it is done. Thank you, Father. We glorify you, we glorify you, we glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Just receive, something's happening. Just receive, something's happening. Thank you, Lord. I see so many people's eyesight being healed right now. Come on, if you, if you believe God to open up blind eyes, put your hand on that eye right yeah, now yeah. in the name of Jesus. And I just speak the word of Jesus over every blindness. You fell spirit of blindness. You've bound him for too long. Loosen them now in Jesus' name. I command new organs in the eye to be formed right now. Lord, I thank you. You open it up in Jesus' name. I hear the word of God. Open up now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for new corneas. It shall be created in those eyes in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Something's happening. Something's happening. Keep receiving. Keep receiving. Keep receiving. Keep receiving what God's doing. Something's happening. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Feel the anointing. Hallelujah. Someone's typing over here, Pastor. They, they just feel the call of God and they want to be born again. That's awesome. That's the anointing awesome. of God. I, I want you to lead people right now before we get to the cup and the bread to, to, tonight. That's right. I believe there's people out there that need Jesus tonight. I want you to, to pay close attention. Don't change the channel right now. This is the most important decision that you can ever make. There's people that's watching me right now that, that says, I want to make sure that my life is right with God. I want to accept Jesus yes. Christ as my Lord and Savior and experience this new birth. The Bible says this, unless a man be born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But I've got good news for you. Jesus loves you and He calls you by name tonight. The Holy Spirit is drawing you. Doesn't matter what you've done in your past. Doesn't matter where you feel or see yourself in right now. His blood is sufficient. Doesn't matter what you've done. There's nothing that can stop His precious blood from cleansing and making you whole. I want you to, wherever you are right now, just to pray this prayer from your heart with sincerity and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. And Lord, I confess with my mouth that I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Lord, I'm lost without you. But Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of the living God. Yeah. And I believe that you died for my sin and my sickness on the cross. And I believe that on the third day you rose from the dead. 
I want to accept you right now as the Lord and the Savior of my life. I ask you to wash me with your blood. Cleanse me of all iniquity. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Make me new. Thank you right now that you write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that from this moment onwards, I am born again. Come and fill me with your Spirit. And I vow to you from this day, I will serve you and only you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to send us an email. Well, I want you to go to our website right now, whatnow.vip. Whatnow.vip. If you prayed that prayer, go to that website. Down there on that website is a book for you to download. It's a free book, a book that will help you in your journey with God. If you prayed that prayer and you made that decision, even right now, Joey, I know you were one that said you want to pray that prayer. You need Jesus. If that was you, just type in the comment section, say, I prayed the prayer. I asked Jesus into my heart right there on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are. God is moving tonight. I feel a release of His power like never before. And signs, wonders and miracles. There's many prayer requests coming up. You can see them. So if you just want to flow a little bit right now, I'm I'm telling you, God is doing something. Souls have been won to to the kingdom right now. Lives have been touched and changed. Something's happening. We've got a couple more moments. I, I want us to stay here for a few more moments. Then we're going to break bread before we end tonight, but God's doing something. I see a lot of people asking me to pray for cancer. And I want to, I, I hate cancer. I hate that foul spirit of cancer. And I, I want to say this to the enemy, that the problem is giving cancer a name because every name is subject to the one name and Jesus yeah, Christ yeah, yeah, is yeah, that yeah. name. And so I speak to that foul cancer now. I command you in Jesus' name Jesus. to let, let them go. You have got no authority, no power. You are defeated on the cross of Calvary. I curse cancer right now to the root in Jesus' mighty name. I command cancer to die off. Skin cancer, now you shall fall off that skin. You shall fall to the ground. Cancer lumps shall fall out of them in Jesus' name. I curse it right now. Breast cancer, lung cancer, blood cancer, cancer in the liver, cancer in the spine. I curse it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say, let my people go. Let my people go. It is written in in the name of Jesus, they will be healed. So I command that name over those bodies and I speak forth life in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, as, as prayer request is coming in right now, that healing flows in the name of Jesus. You just need the Word of God. Just speak the Word and my servant will be healed. I speak healing in your body. I speak healing in your situation. If you cry, uh, cry on to Jesus right now, listen, I'm not the healer. I know the healer and Jesus is His name. I'm the vessel tonight. And if you believe it, this power will flow through your body right now and the Lord will make you whole. By His stripes, you are healed. You receive your healing right now. I curse sugar diabetes, arthritis must go. It must bow its knee right now in Jesus' name. I speak to blood. Blood sugar levels go back to normal in Jesus' name. High blood pressure. You are defeated in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you you heal your people. And I feel the healing power of the Lord flowing. I feel it flowing, flowing, flowing. So you better receive it. Come on, jump into that river of healing tonight and say, Lord, I thank you that I am made whole in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. New, New kneecaps, Lord, to be formed. Creative miracles in joints, I pray. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, it is done. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, everyone, every one of these prayer requests coming through right now. Lord, everyone on the phone lines calling right now. Lord, we just release your love, your healing power. Father, there's just so many. It's still just flooding in. It's still just flooding in. Release your goodness. And we speak life and life abundant. Lord, we are in that Holy of Holies right now. Your presence is right here. Lord, I ask that your healing power would just flood through these airwaves. Every handheld device, every home, every television, touch your people. Touch your people. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. What a night. What a night. 
It's just scrolling. I mean, it's just crazy. One that got me is there's a, a woman that says that the child received the cancer diagnosis. It moved my heart. When I read it and I started praying, I felt the Lord is doing something supernatural for that, for that child. So I, Magdalene, I, I, I stand in agreement with you right now. Cancer is defeated in your Come child. This shall not be unto death. This shall be unto the glory of the Lord. I speak forth healing to that little girl, that child. I speak words of life in the name of Jesus Christ. That the doctors will stand in amazement and they will say, it can only be God. Now, Lord, I know that you hear me. Every time I pray, I know that you hear me, Lord. And I know you honor the prayer of faith. And therefore, by your word, that child is healed now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got the bread and the cup. I want you to get a hold of it right now. We're going to partake of the miracle meal. A meal of blessing. A meal of love. A meal of faithfulness. A meal of victory. The meal that represents who He is. And right there under this anointing, I want you just to partake together. If you're in a home with others, I want you to share it. Break it and share it. Pass the cup. It's Wednesday night, it's family night, it's home cell night. Many of you are gathered together in groups. Or maybe you're alone, it makes no difference. He's there, He's with you. So Lord, once again, we come before you. You told us to do this 1,491 days ago. We've done it every day since on this network. We partake of the bread and the cup. And we receive our victory. If you know someone that's not well in your household, serve them this meal. Be a blessing. The Bible tells us to break bread and always to remember who He is. So we remember Him right now in the victory of the cross. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's partake of the bread and the cup. I feel like something big is going to happen. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing to say, but I just, the intensity of the presence of God is, I just feel something huge is about to happen. And I wouldn't even know how to explain that. But I I feel like at any moment, something huge. Thank you, Jesus. We have to be in that point of readiness. We have to be in that point of His presence. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship. Let's just worship just for a minute or two. We're just in awe at what God's doing here. So let's just come into that place of just worshiping Him. Worship. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just worship Him.
Thank you, Jesus. I want you tonight, in closing, to take a seed, to sow a seed under the anointing, in the presence of the Lord. This week, Pastor Vessel has been a glorious week. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I know you had to change some things around, but thank you. Thank you for staying and thank you for being a part of us. And I know you're going to be back with us in a couple of weeks and we're going to see what God's going to do. But as you travel around the nation of America, light the fire. Let it burn stronger than ever before. Take that anointing, that presence that God has released in your ministry, in your life. And don't forget to visit their website. Don't forget to be a part of, if you live anywhere in America as a pastor and you want him to come and minister, he's here on the ground for a couple of weeks. Just um, reach out to them. But I want you to take a seed tonight. And I want it to just be a seed under the anointing and gratitude of God. Just say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do. Our daily seed is what's going to, to basically carry us. Our daily seed. There's going to be a couple of things. I'm telling you, whatever this world throws against us, whatever we're sensing is this big thing that, that, that may happen may not happen, whatever, just whatever we sensing and believing, I want you to understand something. You can be carried in your faith in every area through coming to the altar of the Lord daily with the bread and the cup, coming daily before God with your giving, daily with your faith in the presence of the Lord. You will be carried. Nothing that the enemy can throw against you in this world can stand against you when you come and you carry the fullness of God in every area of your life. And I want you to know, I want you to know this. Whatever nation you're in, wherever you are in the whole wide world, when you come before God in His anointing and you, you come before Him and you stay in that secret place, that word was a powerful word. That's where we have to live in the secret place. Tonight, I want you to take that seed and say, Lord, I'm sowing it from your secret place. I'm putting it in the ground and watch what God's going to do. Father, I speak to every giver right now over every seed that's about to be sowed. Lord, every amount that's about to get put in the ground right now, Lord, I ask that not one would go unnoticed, but that every seed would produce fruit. In the mighty name of Jesus, Supernatural abundance. Back to every giver, I pray. Be it according to your word, the word of faith. In Jesus' name. Lord God, and keep us. Protect us. Cover us with your blood. Lord, I pray right now for every one of our partners around the world, every one of our viewers, Lord, no matter where they are right now, speak your love, your peace and your guidance upon them. Lord, steer them always in the right direction. Move them out of harm's way. Guide and protect, guard and keep. Release love and your goodness upon every one of our partners and those of your children that love you, Lord Jesus the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let's worship out tonight, guys. Come on, let's just worship. Same song again. We'll see you next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Pastor Vessel, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It's been truly a glorious time. And I uh, wish you all of the best over the next couple of weeks in America. Thank you. Wherever God takes you and leads you. Follow His ministry. Stay with us tomorrow night, live from South Africa. Friday night is the youth. 
and the next, and it's going to be great. We'll be back with you. Don't forget, Sunday afternoon, we're live right here from Faith Church. Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon in South Africa, and we'll be back with you Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. God bless you. Shalom. Hallelujah. Oh, let's worship Him. <laughs>